Hello, Dennis here, uh, or Drake, or whatever you want to go by. Just doing another quick test on Orbit's LET power supply. There are the LW. It turns out the LW version. Oops. Turns out the LW version of these power supplies have a minimum watt of 2.5, which is perfect because uh, LED lights tend to use less than 10 watts, but they still are okay up to 60, so I'm using a good old classic light bulb as my load test. Um, discovering the fact that the LETs are dimmable, we are seeing what appears to be an AM type of modulation. If you ever look up AM modulation, this will look very identical. And the point will be taken because at 120 volts coming in, to make it dimmable, we're generally wave chopping or, um, how do you say, you're changing the RMS voltage of the AC circuit. Because of this, most transformers don't like that. They tend to go kick, kick, kick because you still get the 60 hertz, but you get a back EMF, which makes all types of havoc. Um, we're going to quickly discuss what goes on in the signal. If you look closely, closely at the signal, you see it's shaded underneath. And I thought that was kind of strange until I turned up the frequency and found out there are just tiny little square waves inside of there, which got me thinking, okay, well, they must be modulating the wave. So I thought it would be fun to try out a little experiment here and attempt to actually see what goes on. So I brought a power supply out that puts out about 60 volts or so. I think my other one puts out 30. I was trying to find one that put out 100 volts so I can actually go between 50 and 100 and see what really goes on, how it's doing the dimmable. Now, I don't have a dimmer with me, but I'm pretty sure if Orbit loans me a dimmer, we can even test it and you can actually see the comparison between the before and after. I may actually have to get an isolator for one of my channels uh, or separate the channels through a differential probe or something similar. I have to go find one buried. But that will probably give me uh, the ultimate comparison of what goes on in these transformers. It's a question I've been asking myself about three years now. Well, how, does the, how did they make this patented transformer dimmable? And oops, and it's got a nice short circuit protection on here as well. So generally, this is kind of made for electricians who generally hook stuff up and might have some problems if something is hooked up. So they made it really simple, actually. So you can see I've been connecting and disconnecting it, and it's not pissed it off one bit. A switching power supply might actually have a cow with that, but it is still working the correctly. So let me see. I'm going to pause the video for just about a minute. Okay, continuing where I just left off, um, I've moved the input from that LET power supply now to a regulating power supply, or somewhat regulating. It only goes up to about 60 volts. I have one of these at the office, and they work great for testing out switching power supplies because switching power supplies, believe it or not, actually take your AC and convert it to a very high frequency and run it through a tiny little radio transformer. This is why this transformer can do 60 watts when the bigger, heavier ones that weigh a few pounds can barely do 60 uh, watts with a lot of heat generation. There, the switching power supply topology involves high frequency switching, which is where we're probably getting all that noise. Um, this is unfiltered. The output's AC. As you see, it's a flat line, just like we saw before underneath the curve, but it's flat. Now, if I were to change the voltage, I could do that with this test bed power supply real quickly so you can drop it and raise it. I can also change the voltage on the output, which is one of the features of making this thing dimmable. One of the things that make it kind of awkward, and I was wanted to test this out earlier, and I um, Orbit kind of loaned me some parts to test, is that if I change the voltage, I've also noticed the frequency shifting as well. So that's kind of unusual, but hopefully within specifications um, but this pretty much wraps it up and reason how they made it dimmable is they basically took the AC or the input voltage and modulated the output uh, amplitude modulation if you look up amplitude modulation you'll actually see that you can take a frequency and you can actually increase the uh, voltage although this is kind of a little bit of frequency modulation so I'm pretty sure there's some sort of feedback that they modify um, LET shouldn't really call this a transformer. It's actually a switch mode power supply with uh, input dimming capability. It may have been some sort of design 
but the square waves are pretty darn nasty actually. So the downside to this design, if I were to cut the power off and stuff, it kind of spins off like that. So I don't know if it's intended to have that result, but it's pretty much the, as long as it doesn't provide a huge voltage spike, it could be used for many other operations that aren't. Also know that voltage is too low, but the bulb still glows. Anyhow, um, Drake here signing off.